Behold the humble egg. This little morsel of nutritiousness, and not to mention deliciousness, has been pilfered out of many a bird's nest by our ancestors since the Neolithic era. And yet, recently, this little puppy has gotten quite a bad rap. So, what's the truth? Are eggs really good for you or not? Stick around and we'll find out. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ask Dr. Rossi. Before we start today, I'm going to have to make three pointers to you. Number one, I want to start off with an apology for not having a video for the last couple of weeks. I've gotten very busy at work and we just went on vacation, so got back recently. And as a result of that, I got a little sidetracked. Number two, I want to continue to ask that if you do enjoy the content of this video and videos like it, if you'd support me by going ahead and subscribing to my channel. Number three, Right next to the subscription button, you'll notice down there, there's going to be a bell icon. And that icon is the notification icon. Go ahead and click that one too, because the notification icon is how you get informed when a new post or a new video comes on to channels that you've subscribed to. So without further ado, let's get on to our topic. So this morning, as I was making eggs for breakfast, it dawned upon me that maybe a good topic to discuss might be actually eggs. Because see, when I was growing up, my mom did not give me more than one egg per week. That was her absolute limit. And back in the 80s, this was decidedly the norm. But things have changed a lot since then and eggs are sort of changing in their reputation. So I wanted to talk about this a little bit more. So I'm gonna do this in the form of five questions. Question number one is a question that everyone has been waiting for and that is, are eggs bad for you? The short answer is no. There is no evidence right now in medical literature suggesting that the consumption of eggs is associated with heart disease. In fact, there's some literature suggesting that eggs may be healthy for you. But I think this all depends on how many eggs you're consuming. So just because I say eggs are good for you doesn't mean that you should run yourself to IHOP and have the five egg omelet but rather limit yourself to a moderate consumption of eggs. I've always maintained that if you're eating something that's natural, it cannot be bad for you. And I think that is true with eggs also. So if you consume about one egg a day, and that is a moderate level of consumption, you should be fine. Question number two, well, what about all the cholesterol? See, back in the 80s and 90s, eggs got such a bad rap because of all the cholesterol that it contains. We found that cholesterol causes heart disease and we naturally looked at what foods contain cholesterol and eggs were foremost among them. So people naturally did not eat eggs out of fear that the cholesterol that they consume from the eggs would go straight into their arteries and cause heart attacks. Now we know that's not true. Yes, cholesterol is abundant in eggs. In fact, eggs contain about 185 milligrams of cholesterol, but eggs also have a lot of other good stuff like protein, about six grams of protein, fats, about five grams of fat, and only 70 calories. Now, let's talk a little bit about the cholesterol. Does the cholesterol really clog up your arteries? The answer is no. And the reason is that about 80 to 90% of your body's cholesterol that do in fact impact your arteries are synthesized by your body itself. In fact, only a small proportion of cholesterol in your body comes from your dietary sources. I wanted to switch gears here a little bit and talk about, well, you go to the grocery store and you see all these eggs. Is there a difference between the different types of eggs that you have available? And I sort of put this into three separate questions. Number one, look at the shell color. Brown eggs versus white egg. Is one better than the other? Again, the short answer is no. Now, you may notice that brown eggs are a little bit more expensive than white eggs, but the different shell color simply refers to the different types of hens that lay the egg and say nothing about the nutritional content. The next question that I have people ask is, what about the yolk color? Now, if you've looked at videos, you've noticed sometimes that, you know, in cooking demonstrations, especially in Europe and in Asia, eggs have a bright red dark yolk, whereas American eggs tend to be pale and yellow. Does that mean that the European and Asian eggs are somehow much more nutritious than American eggs? Well, the short answer is yes and no. The color of the yolk is represented by an ingredient called lutein and um, keratin, it's particularly keratin. Now, keratin is the same ingredient that causes the bright orange color that you see in carrots. So when it gets to eggs, you get the same orange color. But 
the color of the egg is more a function of the diet eaten by the hen rather than anything intrinsic to the nutrition itself. So hens that were naturally foraging on foods tend to have darker yolks, whereas hens that were farm raised and fed a diet consisting mostly of corn like they do in America, tend to have a pale yellow yolk. It makes uh, no difference really what color it is in terms of the gross macronutrients and to some extent the micronutrients the egg has. Next question. Well, what about the different types of eggs that you have available in the grocery store? Is there a difference? And I'm gonna go through some of these designations to help you demystify what they mean. The first is cage-free. What do cage-free eggs mean? Well, cage-free eggs just mean that eggs come from hens that were raised for poultry. So these hens were allowed to roam about in a hen house and they were not limited to a cage. Now, understand that these are legal definitions. So the fact that hens were allowed to roam around in a hen house doesn't mean that they are roaming all outside. Sometimes the conditions in these hen houses can be pretty cramped. The second designation is um, free range. So what does free range mean? Well, again, legally, free range simply means that the eggs uh, are come from hens that are allowed exposure to sunlight or exposure to the outside. Now, exposure against is a, again is a legal definition. It does not imply that uh, these chickens are free to roam about outside all the time, but rather if you raise these uh, chickens or hens in a hen house and give them even a little bit of exposure to the outside, it fulfills that definition. So in my opinion, I would not really give any stock to the terms cage-free or free range when you're choosing your eggs. The last designation, and in my mind the most useful one, is pasture raise. Now if I had to choose one type of egg to consume, it would be pasture raised. Essentially, pasture raised eggs mean that these are eggs that come from hens that were pretty much free to roam, uh, mostly outside. Uh, they consume whatever they can find, they forage on whatever they can find, and they essentially come back to the hen house to roost at night. These are probably going to be the best quality eggs that you're going to find, but you'll also find that they are also more expensive. So what's the bottom line? If you had to choose eggs, I would choose pasture-raised over any other type. Do not put a lot of stock on free-range or cage-free. And when consumed in moderation, that is no more than say one egg per day, eggs are pretty good for you. So I hope this helps you making your decisions with respect to your breakfast. And uh, thanks again for watching and look forward to another episode coming up soon.